So I got the honor of uh, giving you a little bit of a word as well. Is that all right? Do you guys enjoy the presence of Jesus? How many of y'all sense that something was happening in the building? Amen. I know that God was moving all over this place. You know that we're going to have more miracles than we've ever had because we're in the midst of a move of God. Can you say that to your neighbor? Just touch him real quick and say, I am in the midst of a move of God. Tell him to your right. Tell him to your left. So we have this amazing book. Did anybody bring their growth book to church? Is there anybody that's spiritual? Okay. Well, we got two or three people. All right. You know, so guys, on Wednesday nights, especially this month, we're really focusing in on the growth book. So bring it to church with you. It'd be amazing if we had everyone in the church bringing their growth books so that we're able to really join in together. So I really want us to do a Bible study for just about 10 to 15 minutes. Is that all right? So I want you to come in with me. Let's do a Bible study. You're going to be able to see on the screen what we're doing as well. So let's go to Mark chapter 7, verse 24 through 30. This is February 16th, so this is tomorrow. However, I wanted to do it today, so there. Um, this is an amazing chapter, and according to Pastor, I don't have to do today's. I can do any verse I want in the book of Mark chapter 7, so God bless you. So Mark chapter 7, verse 24 through 30. Yeah, go ahead, man. Thank you. Then Jesus left Galilee, let's all read together, and went north to the region of Tyre, he didn't want anyone to know which house he was staying in, but he couldn't keep it a secret. Right away, a woman who had heard about him came and fell at his feet. Her little girl was possessed by an evil spirit, and she begged him to cast out the demon out of her daughter, since she was a Gentile born in Syrian, Syrian Phoenicia. Jesus told her, first, I should feed the children. I'm going to highlight this real quick. Every time that you're in this book, remember one of the first steps is that you want to highlight verses for understanding. I'm going to highlight, first, I should feed the children, my own family. That's very, very powerful. The Jews. It isn't right to take food from the children and throw it to them. I'm going to highlight this word, the dogs. Jesus just called this woman a dog. Are you guys following with me? Okay. She replied, that's true, Lord, but even the dogs, here it is again, under the, under the table are allowed to eat the scraps, I'm going to highlight this word, from the children's plates. Highlight children's plates. Good answer, he said. Now go home, for the demon has left your daughter. You can clap on that. It's powerful. Jesus is doing a beautiful miracle. And when she arrived home, she found her little girl lying quietly in her bed. I want you to put this right here, because some of y'all have sleeping issues. You need to highlight this. Lying quietly in her bed. Do you know the devil does not own your sleep? Do you know you shouldn't be settling for the enemy to own your sleep? It doesn't belong to him. And the demon was what? Read that word. What was the demon? The demon was halfway still there? No, what was it? Was the demon kind of hanging around outside for a little bit? Till she, where was the demon? Where is gone? Gone. Can y'all say, where is gone? Gone. <laughs> it's somewhere that I'm not. It's somewhere that I'm not. It's not around my children. It's not around my family. It's not in my house. It's not touching my money. It's not touching anything in my life. It's gone. Why? Because Jesus showed up on the scene. Remember that when Jesus shows up, it is impossible for nothing to happen. It's impossible. Do you understand what I'm saying? When Jesus shows up, it is impossible for nothing to happen. Jesus demands a response. Do you know that nothing else in nature besides us human beings have the right to say no to Jesus? You thought about that? You know that when Jesus goes to the plants and he wants something or the plants do what he wants? Do you know since the moment Jesus said for the rain to fall at a certain time, the seasons have been doing what Jesus told it to do since that day? Do you know the seasons haven't been in rebellion to God? Do you know the animals aren't in rebellion to God? Why? Because the way they were created, the moment God said this is what you're going to do and this is the way you're going to be, it's the way they've been operating since that moment. Only human beings have been given this thing called free will. We are the only ones who have the right to say no to Jesus. 
Isn't it amazing that even though Jesus owns us, doesn't the Bible say our body's not our own? Anybody read that? Even though Jesus owns our mouth, you know, your mouth doesn't belong to you. You can't just say whatever you want. Even though Jesus owns our feet, your feet don't belong to you. Where you go is actually God's choice, not your own. The Bible says, James says, that we are boasting about we will go here tomorrow, this day and that day, and we'll go and plan this trip, and we'll go over and do business over here. And James says, listen, he says, you have no right to say that. What you should be saying is if God wills, I'll go here and there. I'll live in this house. I'll start this business. And he said, anything else besides that is pretentious and from the evil one. When you begin to act like you own yourself, it is evil in Scripture. Wow. Yet even though God owns us, He still wants us to willingly give it to Him. What a beautiful God. He owns you. Did you know that? But He waits for you to willingly give yourself to Him tonight in worship. He owns you. Do you know that? But tomorrow morning, you know what he's going to do? He's not going to force his way into your life. He's going to be waiting for you to wake up and say his name. He owns you. But don't you know that tomorrow, next week on Sunday, you're going to have a choice still to come to church or not. Even though this is his house and we should be so ze uh, zealous for his house. And it should be the most exciting place. And we should be telling people about the house of God. And this is the place where stuff happens. Even though it's the case, you still can have a choice. You don't have to get in your car and come to church. It's still your choice. You know why? People ask me this all the time, and this is so powerful. They said, Gavin, why did God put a chance for sin in the Garden of Eden? Has anybody ever asked that question? We wouldn't even be in this predicament, Gavin, if Adam hadn't sinned, and if that stupid tree of the knowledge of good and evil wasn't there, there wouldn't have been the opportunity, so why did it have to be there? Well, let me tell you why. Because God is love, and love must be chosen. God refuses to be him. He will not force himself on you. You see, if there was no tree of the knowledge of good and evil, there was no other choice but God. Therefore, God would not have truly been chosen because God wants there to be something you choose him over in order for you to truly be choosing God. So God had to make sure there was another choice so that every day Adam and Eve would look at that tree and say, I know that that's tempting, but I choose God. Every day you would walk down and you say, you know, I know that fornication is tempting, but I choose God. Every day you would go and you'd say, I know screaming and yelling at my children are tempting, but I'm going to go with God right now. I'm going to take a couple minutes. I'm going to let him bring stillness to my soul. I'm going to let him help my mouth for this moment right now. Some of y'all need to cut your tongue in two because your tongue is so long. Let me just tell you. You murder people through the telephone. There are people that are found dead in their rooms because they got done talking to you on their phone and, and your tongue is hanging out the phone, y'all, because you have such a big mouth. That tongue doesn't belong to you. The Bible talks about the tongue. It said that thing can get you in trouble. James says that that tongue is like a rudder of a ship. It said you can spark it and a fire can happen and you can either set a fire for good or you can set a fire for really bad. Touch your mouth right now. Everybody in this place, could you just put your hand on your mouth? Just indulge me for a second. The Bible says that God came to Jeremiah. Keep your hand on your mouth. And it said that he came to Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 1. And God said this, Do not be ashamed or intimidated that you are young. For I'm going to touch your mouth. And I'm going to use it for the world. Right now, I believe in the name of Jesus as you are touching your mouth. This is what God did. Just listen, focus, because he's going to do this for you. It said that he brought and he touched it with a hot coal. And he summoned it for himself. The mouth belonged to God. And every word that Jeremiah said never touched the ground, the Bible says. And everything that he said came to pass. Now, right now, as you're touching your mouth, I want you to pray. I want you to begin to pray. Just ask God, Lord, let this be yours. Because some of y'all are ashamed of what you've been saying. Come on, just say, God, this mouth is yours. Just talk to him between you and him. Just give your mouth over to the Lord. Let him touch your mouth with a hot coal. Some of y'all gossiping is about to end in your life tonight. Some of y'all gossiping is about to end in your life tonight. You've indulged in something that God hates. It's all right. Just repent right now. Say, God, I want this mouth to be used for you. Some of y'all, you don't have anything but negativity coming out of that mouth. But God is going to replace your negativity with life. He's going to replace your words with His, and you're going to speak life. 
Thank you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Divine moments. Divine moments. So we're in this place in Mark, and the Bible says this, that Jesus comes and there's this woman. This woman knows that she's not worthy of what she's about to ask for. Please notice. She knows she's not worthy of what she's about to ask for. Yet because of love, she asks for it. She loves her daughter. She comes to Jesus, and Jesus says these amazing words, these horrible words, these intense words. He literally, after she asks, with all the humility that she has, the loving Jesus that you read about in Scripture, the, the silent little calm little lamb, the beautiful little Lord that only loves people and never rebukes them. I don't know what Bible you've been reading, but that Jesus that some people in the church literally believe, he only says positive stuff, that Jesus looks at her and says, you're a dog. I'm not going to give this miracle to you because it belongs to the children. But everybody, you got to hear me. Jesus never ever has anything that's a surprise to him. He's always got a plan. He's always got a strategy. When he speaks to you, he knows exactly what he's saying. When he asks a question, it's not because he needs the answer from you. It's because he wants you to know that you have the answer already inside of you. When he asks you something, when he approaches you, Jesus is saying something. And even in the midst of what could seem like a harsh word, what is Jesus doing? He's training us. Why? Because Jesus put up a barrier between the breakthrough and where she was. Jesus himself put up a barrier. In other words, he tried to create a roadblock because he wanted to see what kind of faith was really inside of her. There is a faith that the Bible talks about, and it's called this, relentless faith. Relentless faith. Faith. I want you to say out loud, I am relentless. The word relentless means this, oppressively constant, persistent, continuing, listen to these words, inflexible, unable to be moved. There is a faith that God is asking of his church that is oppressively constant toward God. That is persistent no matter what the obstacle that comes up is. That is continuing through all struggles, through all barriers, through all people's words, through all put downs, through all setbacks. There is a relentless faith that is inflexible to the enemy because we know what Jesus has paid for. We know what he has done for us. We know what we get from him. It belongs to us so we will not be moved. You see, Jesus wants you to have that deliverance, ma'am. He wants you to have it. But there are roadblocks that are in your way right now. What are you going to do about it? Do you really believe deliverance belongs to you? Because that's the question. If you're in doubt, if you don't think you're worthy enough, I get it. If you're in doubt, sir, that you're going to get over that addiction because you've been in it for the last 10 years, I understand. If you hate certain things about yourself and you're like, man, I need deliverance and people have laid hands on me and nothing's happened, I get it. But Jesus is still waiting because the violent take it by force. There is a faith that is not taken back by a pothole. There is a faith that is not taken back by a struggle of any kind. There is a faith that exists that people cannot talk you out of your miracle. There is a faith that exists that it doesn't matter who says it negatively. It doesn't matter who speaks against your child. You know your child's coming to God. There is a faith that exists that no matter who said your child had issues with learning, God broke through, didn't he? And your child graduated from high school. There is a faith that exists that says that even though I'm a father and I have problems, and I have issues. God said I'm a man of God. God said I'm a mighty man of valor. And until I become that, I'm not going to stop. Every person under the sound of my voice, do you know what the faith I'm talking about? It's called relentless faith. There is somebody in here who literally the miracle is literally one day away. Did you hear what I just said? For some of y'all, the miracle is not far. It's one day away. 
but you got to be relentless. Every mother, every father, just put up your hand right now. I want you to stand to your feet. Every parent, I've, I've come to pray for you. If you're a parent, stand to your feet. Lift your hands. Close your eyes. Thank you, Jesus. I'm praying for strength for you right now. I'm praying for strength for you right now for your children, for your grandchildren. Just receive right now. There's the power of God. It's already been in this place tonight. Let him fill you with strength, parents, right now. Let him fill you with strength. You need a breath of fresh air. You need a second wind. God is going to give you a second wind. Strength for your family. Strength for your family right now. But you have to determine in yourself to partner with God in relentless faith. I will have my son in church. I will have my daughter right next to me. I will have my sister will be sitting right next to me in this building. Come on. That's the way you have to believe. You cannot let. I don't know what's oppressing you. I don't know what's coming against you. But God gave me a short message tonight to give you a shot of relentless faith. Remember what you have inside of you. Greater is he that is in you than anyone who is in the world. Do you know the bigness of the God you serve? Have you taken it for granted that he is the one who set the stars into place? Have you taken it for granted that he literally put the earth in motion? Have you taken it for granted that all of the galaxies fit within the palm of his hand? Do you know how big he is? Is anything too hard for God? Is this really too hard for him? Is this really too big for him? Do you realize who your servant thank you Jesus receive strength right now come on just receive the strength of God thank you Lord Jesus relentless faith what have you given up on that God is telling you I did not tell you to give up I want to put faith in you again I want to put belief in you. Come on, he's going to touch your faith. Faith is being touched tonight. What have you given up on? What is doubt crowding your mind and you're worried about? Let God touch you with faith. The Bible says the breath of the Almighty, the breath of the Almighty brings understanding. Jesus, would you just breathe? <sighs> breathe on every person standing right now. Bring understanding to the situation. Let them know your strategy and what you're trying to do. As you're standing right now, every eye is closed. This was a simple word tonight, but it was an important word for people to hear. I want to ask you something. Do you know Jesus? Do you know Jesus? He is the one who you need to know. You need to have him on your side. Are you without the shadow of a doubt right now that if you died tonight that you would go to heaven? This is going to be very simple. Most people are already standing. This is all I want you to do. Altar team, come forward very quickly. Come forward. If you right now, everybody quiet, if you right now are in this place, you say, I do not know Jesus. God is filling many people with faith tonight. But your journey needs to begin in faith by stepping out and allowing Jesus to become the Lord of your life. If you say, Gavin, I don't know him, or maybe you've received him, but you have not been serious about God, serious about your relationship with God, and you say, Gavin, I want to make a decision to be the real deal with Jesus tonight. I'm not going to ask you to lift your hand. I'm simply going to ask you to walk forward right now. One, two, three. Walk up here right now. I want Jesus. Come on, make room for them. Here they come. I want Jesus. I want Jesus. Walk up here. Come on. Come on. Look at all these people. Come on, give them a hand. Give them a hand. Give them a hand. We got a family coming. We got a husband and a wife and a child. We got a whole family coming to Jesus tonight. Come on, let them over. Help them as they come. Keep clapping. Come on, as they're walking. 
You would want that to happen for you. It's not easy to just do this. It's not easy to just do this. Come on, they're still coming. They're still coming. Act like it's your own brother, like your own sister. Come on, celebrate somebody. Celebrate somebody. Hallelujah. Look at all these people wanting to receive Jesus. Right over here. We have people right over here. Every person under the sound of my voice, please pray a prayer out loud with me. Pray this prayer out loud with me. And if you say, Gavin, I should have been up there. You still got a little bit of time. Come up. Don't worry about it. Nobody moving at this moment as we're going to say this prayer. And I promise we will dismiss you. Say, dear Lord Jesus, thank you for being my Savior. Thank you for being my Lord. Wash me in your blood. Thank you for raising from the dead so that I could have new life. I want to be born again. Make me a new person. Make me a disciple. Lord, I need your help. I don't know how to do it on my own. But I know that you're going to be with me because I'm believing right now in faith that you're doing something in my heart. I'm no longer guilty. I'm no longer guilty. I am now innocent because the blood of Jesus is washing away my sins. Help me to forgive myself. Now, right now, every person who's up here, forgive yourself and forgive anybody in your life you have anything against. You have to forgive. The Bible says if you do not forgive others, he cannot forgive you. Just do this right now. Forgive. Just let him go. Just let him go. Just a couple more seconds. Just let him go. Thank you, Jesus. Every person saying, I thank you, Lord, that I'm now going to heaven. My life will never be the same. Help me bring heaven on earth. In Jesus' name. Everybody shouted, amen. Come on, amen. Amen. Come on, somebody shout Jesus. Somebody shout Jesus. We love you so much. Please make sure that you come to church on Sunday. Bring some people with you. Remember, we got lead night on Sunday night. It's going to be incredible. It's going to be amazing. You want to come. Make sure you're bringing people. We got that online. We got a special discount code for you. We got so many beautiful things happening. We love you guys. Thank you for coming tonight. And uh, yes. Oh, Friday at Young Adults. If you're Young Adults, I'm going to be preaching Friday night with my wife. We're going to be there doing the, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to be doing the relationship series. Invite some people to that. We're going to be talking about how to do singleness well, how to do married life well. We're going to do it all. So God bless you guys. Thank you so much again.